Hello everyone, welcome to Coding with Sijas. This is the fifth video in the UFS series. If this is the first video watching in the series, do click this link to access the entire playlist. In the last video, we learned how to add controls to the view using properties and aggregation. We also learned how to use event, event handlers and methods. In this video, we will learn more about controllers and its life cycle. So when we talk about controllers, the immediate question to be answered is what is controller? To understand more about controller, we need to understand what is MVC pattern. MVC pattern is a pattern used in software development which divides application concern into three parts. First one being model. A model is a part of the application which stores or manages the data. Second one is view. View is a part of the application which is responsible for the representation. In the last video, we have seen examples of view with controls which is representing data. Third being the controller. A controller is a part of the application which reacts to the user and to the view by modifying the view and model. The picture you see here is a good representation view model controller. So if you look at here, a model is something which is connecting to the view by one way binding or two way binding. A binding is a way how which a view can access data from the model. So whenever a data is updated, it notifies the controller that there is some changes happen and controller notifies the view that there is some change in the model. So that's how a view updates data. If user have updated some data and you have to update in the model, the view will notify the controller and the controller updates the data to the model. So this is entirely what is an MVC pattern where the application is divided into three parts. So let's see how to define a controller. Let's take an example from the last video. A controller is defined by using sap.ui.define syntax. So here I'll just create a simple controller. Firstly, the controller should have the same name as the view. If it is having one to one relationship, meaning that a controller can be shared between multiple views or if two to three views are using same logic, then we can reuse the controller. In that case, we can give a common name, but usually we maintain a one to one relationship between view and controller and we keep the same name. So let me create a view called second dot view dot XML. I'll copy the same syntax from here where I need So this is a view syntax and it's not necessary to have all these things because we are defining a simple view. So here we have a view as second. So I'll give the controller name as app.second where app being the namespace. So let me go ahead and create a controller. So I click on plus second which is same as the view and should be preceded by controller.js. A controller.js tells the UI5 framework that that JS file is a controller. Now, what is the definition? We have to use sap.ui.define. So sap.ui.define is used to load modules from UI5 framework. So what is a module we need? We need the controller module which is under sap slash ui slash core slash mvc slash controller. This is a controller. And let me add the function. So if I have this, this was supposed to be an array. And second parameter is a function. Since I have this here, 
I need the instance of the controller. And that's how you create a simple controller. But this doesn't complete a controller. So what we need to do is we need to return a copy of extended controller. So for that we use return the original control object dot extent. We have to give a name. I'm giving it as app dot second. Also an empty object which represents how or what is being extended from the original. So with this we have a controller completed. So let's go to the index.js and we say that instead of first we are loading the second. Let me go to terminal and serve the module. I'll click. I'll bring the tab over here. So we have our tab with no content. Let me go back to the view. Second view. I'll close this. I'll close this. I'll add a content to the view. So for now, let me add an app. Close the app. Let me add a page with title second view. Close the page. Add a simple text. Say you have reached the second view. Self closing it, save it, come here, refresh. So this is our view with the new controller. So you can see here, I do not have any logic here because there is no event to be responded or there is no user interaction happening right now. So a controller is a place where you store all the life cycle events and other methods. By other methods, I mean in the last video, we have seen that on a button, we need a button press event and that button press event was handled by a, a function here. Such functions are called event handlers. Also, when you type event handler, you have to make sure that you have an on keyword, which makes it an event. So for example, it is a good practice to use on press to write an event handler, an underscore function to tell controller that this is being an internal or a private function. So if I want to do some initialization work, I can do it as a private function. Also all event handlers will be using on keyword as a starter. Now let's go back to our controller. So let's talk about controller life cycles. What is life cycling? Take a human as an example. A human is born, he strive, he get old and he dies. There are four events here. The, the birth, the striving, the getting age and the death. Similarly, in UI5, we have four life cycle methods. It's called initialize, before rendering, after rendering and exit. What does initialize? Initialize is the first life cycle method or this is the first method in a controller to get executed. This is where you do most of the initializations. You can create uh, JSON models, or you can create some data which need to be initially present in the controller before you write some logic. This is where you write as in on init. Next is before rendering. What is before rendering? Ultimately, since you are running the application on a browser, everything is HTML. So before your view is rendered, which meaning that you have an XML view, the parser have gone through the XML view. It generates the HTML objects and finally it is being put into the DOM. So this process of putting into the DOM is called rendering. So even before this rendering, if you want something to be, you know, some logic to be written, that is where you write on before rendering. Next is after rendering. 
after rendering is a time period after the the items are added to the dom so if you want to execute something after the ui is rendered this is where you have to handle it and next is exit event what is an exit event exit event is called when your controller is being closed or your view have been destroyed so if you want to do some kind of garbage collection maybe you have created a lot of models and everything in a run in it and you have been collecting data from users since you know the entire operation of the of the application and finally it's time for you to close the application as soon as your view is being destroyed then there are a lot of data or items being allocated in the memory and you have to clear it off and this is the exact place where you have to do it now how to do it for all the events over here the controller do have hooks so hooks are the methods which can be overridden in your controller to write your own logic so what are these methods these are the methods on init for initialization on before rendering for before rendering on after rendering for the after rendering of the after the dom is being rendered and on exit at the death of the controller so let's modify our application to understand more about it so i'll remove these two things and i'll write on init so according to our logic on init will be called as soon as the application is started so let's see on init is being invoked i'll save it i'll come here and refresh it you can see on init being invoked then it came so that is exactly where on init is happening now let's write on before rendering again that's a function and i'll write something similar only the difference is on before rendering this being invoked come here refresh the first one is on it being invoked second one is on before rendering is being invoked now third one i'll add on after rendering is invoked so you can see on in it on before on after it's a bit tricky to make on exit to be invoked let's see on exit again same logic only difference being we mention here on exit is being invoked something similar on in it on before on after so you see that on after only the view is coming up here then you have exit which should be called it should be called when you exit that since when you close the browser it exits the application and in background it is being invoked so if you write an application logic over there or when you navigate outside the application you will be able to do that you can't show it over an alert because the application is already closed but in the background it is being executed so i hope you got some idea about what is a controller what are the life cycle methods and how to add some functions and even handler to it let's also try adding new functions just to brush up so i go to second controller i open second view and i create a button which has a text called call other method where i'll just write a press event and here i say on pressed i come here i remove i comment the alert because i don't want to be disturbed and i write a function on pressed so as you know this is an event handler so in this event handler i'm supposed to call the other method which i'm going to create show toast is my new function 
so what do i do here i just show a message toast so to call message toast i need message toast to be invoked you will understand i show it why i have to so show message toast message shown how to call this method since this is a part of your controller i can use this event and directly ax show toast this is how i can call a function within the controller i'm refreshing here all other method and nothing came and let's see what's the error the error is message toast is not defined so it is it is required to for you to import the module message toast so sap slash m slash message toast and i'll just import it so but with this code you can see i can show the message so guys that's for today we have learned about controller maybe in the next video we will explain about models so if this is the first video you are watching here you know where to find the playlist also do subscribe leave comments for any questions or queries do you have thank you see you in the next video